Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion Physics Day and some polyhedrons again. This is mostly geometry, slightly some things about Fusion, or like how we make this polyhedron in Fusion, with as little step as possible. Uh, you can call this a simple way or a hard way, the sketch is a bit confusing. If you just want to make this, just follow along the steps I do. If you want to know about, more about the geometry, please ask questions and I'll make, make another video. This is the small stellated dodecahedron. You can see it here. It's a Wikipedia page. You can read about it. Uh, if we look at it, we can see that we have this straight edges here go all the way. And if you examine slightly, you have this pyramid shape. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's, of course, six on the back side. So if you think that you, if you, in your mind, remove these pyramids, you see that there is a dodecahedron hiding inside. So one way of doing this is creating a dodecahedron first and then making the rest of the shapes. I use a slightly different workflow, which I'm going to do by changing the colors like this. You see our color things here. You can see the yellow part. The yellow part is simply a rotation of the green and blue part. Uh, and if you look at the green faces, I'm going to look from the top on this. You can see this forms like a outer pentagon here. So the green faces here is like a pentagon extruded or lofted to a single point. And then we can cut away these blue parts here. That's the whole idea of the design. And you can see these edges align here. So the angle for all the extrudes or loft are the same the whole time. Because this part has a little small interesting thing. Uh, this is of course the same size and so forth. If we measure the angle, we can select one face here and this face here. I would call this an inside angle. You can see it's 116.5651. But if we take the outside angle of these two faces, the angle is the same. So the angle between two adjacent faces are the same. And of course, this is a parametric model driven from one parameter. So we can change the size to 223 millimeters. And what size am I talking about? That's the size from vertex to vertex. That's what my design is based on. And also, the origin point is in the center of the body. It makes things easier to not the need to create extra uh, angles or, or axes or planes. That's how I like to do things. So let's have a look at this. This is just going to be a straightforward workflow. The first sketch is a bit confusing. We start a new design. We create a new sketch. We're going to do it from the front. We start with a polyhedron. Or a, sorry, a polygon. Circumscribe polygon or whatever type you want. We tab over and do five because we want a pentagon. I'm just going to mark. Sorry, I'm going to switch over to where are you? Selection window. I want window selection. Uh, I want to select all of this, switch it over to construction because I don't want the profiles flashing on my screen. Step one, we want to make one of the lines a vertical. I'm going to make the one to the left. Makes it easier for me to think. This is how I design it. And now we're going to do some lines. Got the L on the keyboard here in the sketch palette. Switch them over to construction lines. We're going to start with a line from the center point of a pentagon. You can see I'm making this a bit away from the region. We're going to connect it to region shortly, but I like to sketch most of this out slightly to the side we do a line go out something like this make sure i get the perpendicular constraints i go straight up the perpendicular constraint again i'm going to later go down to this point so i'm going to pick this up now move straight up and we move back and forth it pops out and help us okay that's where that's the perpendicular and i'm going to go back down here and then one line from the center point straight up like this now we're going to start adding some constraints. These are the basic constraints I use for dodecahedron. We're going to do midpoint between the vertical side of a pentagon and the side of a line that goes uh, perpendicular to that line. We're going to use an equal constraint, making these outer lines here a square, so we can take any horizontal and vertical line and make them equal like that and then we're going to use a midpoint once again select this line from the center of course this is the center line of a polyhedron and we're going to do that to a bridging point and by doing that we're going to do escape i cannot like scale everything here and now comes the intro to these lines i'm going to do l for line i'm going to do a line from here straight down i'm going to do escape to turn that off and i'm going to make an equal constraint between this line and this line here so they become the same length and then i'm going to do another line 
is going to go from down here from this point we just created going to go up and i'm going to go straight out from here let's find it and i'm going to go back into here so i get the perpendicular constraint only thing now we need to constrain this line so we're going to do a coincident constraint between this line and i'm going to find i want the midpoint of any of these two lines the uh, horizontal and vertical line but i can't find the midpoints i'm holding down the shift key and the mid you can see there's a very faint let's move zoom in a bit you see the small blue cross and the midpoint constraint pops up so i'm going to select there and do click like that and for visibility i will select this line and turn it into normal line because this is the only important line for me now we need to dimension things what we have created here this line here is the line that goes through one of the faces for here later so this here on here is the vertex or the pointy part of the polyhedron so our dimension we haven't created any parameters so we're going to do that first we're going to do a user parameter so we can change it easily v2 v vertex to vertex so let's do it 200 millimeters just like that now we can use that gonna hit d on the keyboard and go dimension from the vertex to the origin points they're going to be the center points of course we do vertex to vertex we're going to use the parameter but we need to divide it by two because only half the distance we're going to later as you can see we are creating half of a body the rest is going to be on top later we're going to finish sketch and now we're going to create so you can see if you look at this and we go back here we have created the point down here we have made a line the line we're done is the center of this face up here that's going to connect to pentagon up here so we need to make the pentagon that represents these faces up here and for doing that we need a construction plane so we're going to do offset plane select uh the what is it xy plane uh distance no i'm going to do two object and simply select the point up here like that gonna hit ok create sketch on a newly created plane i'm going to create once again a polygon circumscribe polygon i will now directly select this origin point and slide to rotate things you can see i know i need to fix it here so i'm going to select that and just pull it out tab over and say five sides we've got we want a pentagon we need to somehow now dimension a lock in this pentagon we do that hitting p for project and project in this point out here not the line this can be tedious something's only selecting points but i only want the points i don't want the line and i'm going to open up my sketches here we can see the first sketch is fully defined just so i don't click something else i'm going to hide it for now i only want this point midpoint constraint between this edge and this point turn on the sketch you can see here now we have this up here so we're going to later going to loft or i'm going to extrude of this face down to here i'm going to extrude because extrude always gives flat faces loft can sometimes do some strange things so it should be working with loft but i use extrude because we're going to do two of them I'm going to look at it later going to hide the first sketch once again i'm talking too much sorry about that i'm going to do a look at the sketch i'm looking from the top now we're going to sketch the diagonals if we look at this here you can see you can see if we look at the blue face look from the top i have now sketched the outer pentagon we now need the lines representing these diagonals here so we're going to go over to a sketch here l on the of keyboard for line and we are going to sketch the pentagon diagonal that goes from one vertex to the next to one corner to one corner and if we keep on doing this there will appear a pentagon in the middle that is rotated in the other direction if we look at our model here you can think here is the outer pentagon and if you look at this pentagon in the middle so move it to the middle you can see this is orientated 180 degrees around exactly like our sketch and the last thing, uh, because we're going to do firstly one extrude, creating the center body, and then we're going to create these cuts here. You can see these profiles I'm clicking on here, that are the cuts, the blue cuts here. And to do that, we need an outer perimeter. So I'm going to do O for offset, and I'm going to select all the outer lines here. And just for ease, we already have a parameter, so let's keep on using that parameter. The size is not important, it just has to be substantially larger than our body so like that offset that by v2v hit ok and we can finish our sketch now we can do love but for i'm going to call it consistency i'm going to do two extrudes so e on the keyboard 
first extrude i'm going to extrude the center body which are all the profiles within the pentagon here so i'm going to select all of them uh, of course fusion support uh, suggests the uh, extrude direction upwards because that's the direction of our little uh, axis turn on the region but our region is below us so we're going to do minus and for simplicity we have our parameter v2v so we're going to use that the only thing we now need to add is the taper angle and here is some more math it's going to be minus we know that because we're going to taper inwards it's going to be a sine or arc sine of parentis one divided by the square root sqrt of sorry of five the square root of five two parentis and we have black numbers and we can hit enter we have now extruded if we turn on our first sketch we can see we are hitting the point down here we could use a loft but i prefer extrude because i'm now going to make a second extrude so we are basically two extrudes basically the same parameters extrude in this case we select the outer and we select the faces we want to cut away these five here including that one i'm just gonna hide the first sketch and make it more visible have a select all of them yeah we're gonna see once again it says uh, extrude upwards new distance minus v2v straight down of course this is wrong we want these to have the same taper angle as earlier so once again taper angle main minus a sine one divided by sqrt square root of five and from that we can now hide our sketches we can you see we have like made half of it if we look at this here i have basically created the blue and green green and blue part we have here if you look this is a green part. this is a yellow one if you look at this this is the green and blue part now we need to make the second part so i'm going to use a circular pattern i'm just going to hit the s on the keyboard i have already put pattern commands up here you can type in circular pattern want to do that or you can click the rectangular pattern in this case because now you can change the pattern types we're going to switch to circular we're going to make it of bodies yes what body this body now the important part is which axis we select this just depends slightly on how you create a sketch we do not want the axis in this case the x-axis the red one i'm going to zoom out slightly it makes often easier to see if you look on top here top view like that you can see the red axis the x axis goes through an edge and that's not what we want to turn or rotate around we want to rotate around the green y axis the y axis as we can see goes through one of the sides here so axis one of the faces select the green axis it's going to always go to quantity of three for some reason so we're going to change that to two and from that you can see we are close to things going to hit ok if we now hide the region and open up our browser here we have two bodies so we're going to do a combine select our two bodies make it operation to join and hit ok and we are left with one single body to check things we do a measure from vertex to vertex 200 millimeters let's say we want to change that to uh, one two three 123 millimeters hit ok we do an inspection and we can see that is now 123 millimeters like we wanted and our region is in the center of the body so i know this can be a bit confusing if you haven't played around with this type of geometry but this is like the shortest workflow of just getting this done there are a lot of other ways to do it you can find a bunch of videos on uh, please look at other CAD software in most cases you can use workflows for um, from other CAD, soft CAD software creating this type of polyhedron good thing of course everything is flat faces you can sketch on faces and play around and do whatever you want with so with that said take care and goodbye